Uh, boys, I saw a countdown. I think we're live. So hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's stream. Uh, today, we are going to try to kill some cockroaches. I have no cockroaches in my house, so I can't really, not physical cockroaches, but um, I am, uh, I'm excited to have my guest today. Um, I don't know, I, you know, how do I even introduce you, Dan? Um, I, you know, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Uh, my name, by, by, by the way, I'm Jim Walker. I'm at Cockroach Labs. I, I kind of do a lot of these kind of exclusive, these external events. So I guess I was just presuming people knew who I was. But uh, I'm Jim. I'm at Cockroach Labs. Dan, I'm going to shoot it over to you to give your own introduction. I can't even start with you. No worries. Um, my name is Dan Pop, Pop Andrea. I am the director of open source uh, ecosystem and community for a company called Sysdig. Um, I also have a show called The Popcast, uh, which is a weekly show that talks about the folks behind the, the tech. Um, really cool people like Spencer from Cockroach have been on and Kelsey Hightower and all. And I love it. I've been doing it for the last 16 months and it's it's a pure joy. And I'm also the executive producer of Cloud Native TV. And also I attempt to, every couple of years, I attempt to break Cockroach. And thus far, I've been, it's been a hard, hard knock life for Dan Papandrea trying to do that. Back to you, Jim. Well, that, that's your that your side gig is trying to kill our database. That's uh, that's interesting. I you know I don't know how you fit it in. Number one, number two. I mean you know if that's what you do in your free time, that's uh, it's good fun, Dan. Dan every I, release, you, every release is chef's kiss. <laughs> it's better right? and better. Yeah, you know. Do I? What do we call you? We call you Dan. We call you Pop. What is it, dude? You can call me Pop. People call right. me Pop. All right. All right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know sometimes. But I'm also joined by. Um, um, Chris and Jim from our team, the heavies. You had and, to bring well, in the yeah, big honestly, guns. Like I just, I'm just a marketing guy. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't command line. What you know? I'm, I'm a VI guy. I tell you that. But Chris, you want to give a quick intro as well? Sure, hey, everyone. I don't have a fun nickname. You can just call me Chris or Cassano, whatever, whatever <laughs> works for you. Uh, but I'm uh, the manager of our solution engineering team in the eastern part of the U.S. So helping customers get on board with Cockroach. Again, trying to you know help them through, hey, if you want to try to kill it, go for it. We'll we'll help you navigate through it. And here's all the resiliency that you can build into your app uh, around working with Cockroach. So uh, I'll pass over to Jim, who's part, part of my team. And uh, I, I would say I work for Jim. Jim's awesome. Okay. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm Jim Hatcher. I'm a solutions engineer at Cockroach. Uh, uh, because Jim Walker is so famous, I have to go by Jim too. Um, you were this uh, junior, I'm not, no, 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 dude. It's just because you joined after me. That's it. Like I had the email amp name. I'm, I'm Jim at Cor Cockroach, dude. Like, right, right. so there. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I do, I do a lot of work with uh, Kubernetes integrations on Cockroach. I'm a certified Kubernetes administrator. And uh, yeah, just happy to, happy to be part of the conversation today. Well, Thank you both for joining because honestly, like I, I talk a big game about Kubernetes, but man, I don't get in there and get my hands dirty. You guys get your hands dirty and you're, you're, you're getting your hands dirty with customers who are trying to figure out a lot of these things and, and issues that go wrong. Um, you know, you know, you know, Pop, you and I were talking about this prior to the event. It's kind of like, hey, look, if you really want to kill cockroach, like you really could, right? Like if you want to go get root access and start killing processes really fast and stuff. But like, I mean, I think from a you know, the five nines are like 99% of the attack vectors. You've tried a fair amount of them, right, Dan? Without a doubt. And and again, totally want to preface the same thing you just said. It's like, look, if, you know, there's folks that can go ahead and unplug a server and there you go, right? Obviously, if you're at a data center, you know, or if you're at a cloud provider, that's not going to happen. Or somebody can, you know, do things. And, and so what I like is, again, the resiliency of the cockroach DB, the cockroach, the way that you do your clusters, the way that the data is replicated in a very sharded in a very, very efficient way. I mean, again, you think about your pedigree. You come from Colossus. I mean, you built this IP that is incredible. And again, I've talked to your founders, so I know of that history, right? And so every release, what I try to do is try to understand what you all have done to safeguard it even further. And every single yeah. release, it gets better and better. Right, and so again, I don't want to keep on keep blowing some blowing some sunshine at y'all. Let's go. We're gonna we're gonna attack this thing. All right. Dude, I, so. I like sunshine. Uh, you know, and and you and I, you and I have both met through the CNCF and kind of through the whole Kubernetes community. And and you know, I it, I know you. I, I think you've been trying to get Polvi on for a long time, right? On your show. I, I'm sorry. We gotta we gotta put it out there, right? Like maybe he'll listen to this too. Um, 
but you know, I, he had this concept called right there. You go. There's look at look at right on cue. He's got the the podcast. Yeah. De- by the way, somebody was asking if there'll be a QA. Absolutely. Whatever chat platform you're on, I'll make sure that that we get that up. But and welcome yeah. to Anchor Anchor Singh. Placing your bet on Cockroach DB and 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 enjoy. Happy to be here. Happy to have you with us. Man, you're such a good host, dude. But you have your own podcast, and it's the podcast. And he, so, anyway, Paul V talked a long time ago about uh, you know Giphy, Google infrastructure for everyone else. And and the way I think about that is is taking some of these uh, these core concepts and the distributed principles that that you know Sanjay Gemawat and Jeff Dean kind of implemented at at Google and applying them to lots of different things. I mean, look at Cockroach is a, a descendant of Spanner. This is that architecture, just as kind of like. Kubernetes is a descendant of Borg, right? And like, I think, you know, if we start to look at, like there's open tracing and Dapper that started in Google. And then there's like, we've moved on. We're now in open telemetry. And I think like, I'm just really excited that that core of the distributed principles around scale. But I think today we're going to talk about resilience, Dan, right? And like yeah. another core concept in Kubernetes, it's how do you survive, right? And I think that's the, that's the vector we're going to, we're going to, we're going to talk about today, right? Like C groups, let me container it for you. Again, com- right. coming comes from from Google, right? So you know, again, shameless plug for them. But like you know, if you think about all the building blocks of all these great cloud technologies, you know, protobuf something Cystic uses, for instance, right? So so those are the things that like that the, you, people are building incredible things that you couldn't do years ago. And also right. the power of open source and the power of the you know so from the community saying, look, this is cool. Did you think about this, this, and this? Here, let me try to you know help you from that perspective. That's right. what I love about cloud native and that's what I love about the community. Yeah. Well what I like about the community, Dan, honestly, is and and cloud native and the CNCF is the people I've met, honestly, like I, hands hands down, I've met you through that, dude, and and I'm 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 happy to call you friend, dude. I I'm sorry I'm not in New York to go out drinking with you and Augustus, and you know, you know this craziness that goes on. There's like this, dinner, it, dinner and we weren't drinking. We had a great, great dinner. That, I'm sorry yeah. to yeah. go out and eat shrimp yeah. and stuff. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so Dan, uh, I, you know the challenge is on. The gauntlet's been thrown. I think you you threw it at us. So yep. how do you want to start this? Let's let's get into it. Let me kind of give you all the background of what I set up, and then I'll kind of show it in in the uh, the terminal here. So, um, first off, great documentation, and that's I'm sorry to plug you all, but ec- excellent documentation for getting started. And and you you know you can also just go. They have a cockroach cloud. You can click a button and have all of this um, if you want to have it managed and all that fun stuff. Um, and so, I went ahead and deployed on something called Sevo Cloud. Sevo Cloud's a friend of friend of mine. Uh, the group they do an amazing thing. It's basically managed K3s, so you can spin up a cluster yeah. within like literally uh, 90 seconds, and you have a cluster up and running. Um, you have like you know uh, um, storage classes already set up, and I, I think I, I, there's a tweet that I did that talks about how to change the default uh, class because you all have defaulted to SSD, which uh, as a storage class. Um, you can create your own storage classes, obviously with Kubernetes, but um, for I think like GKE or, and or EKS, there's you know storage classes defined. Anyway, so I deployed a cluster and then I just ran your you know again since this is just you know I'm not doing this in production environments, an insecure deployment with uh, th- uh, three pods deployed. So let me get into it. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay, are you all seeing this? Hey, real quickly, that yeah, Sivo. By the way, Dan, I love Sivo too. They're right. It's, if anybody's asking, it's C I V O, V is in Victor. Yep. Civo dot com. Those they're they're doing some cool stuff. Yeah, if you go to Sivo dot com slash podcast, you'll get a two hundred fifty dollar credit. Anyway, oh, plug you, plug done. Plug the, the plug plug-in. done. <laughs> you could also go to Cockroach. That anyway, uh, we'll You're talk right. about that later. Um, so if you look at this, I took your out of the box. And, um, if we go to here, hold on. We're going to go to the documentation. I literally just took your single insecure uh, deployment here, uh, orchestration here, which again, for the, the latest build that you had, um, which again, very good documentation. I used uh, configs versus Helm, right? And this is where I have, you know, I literally ran through these steps. Anybody right now can go and do what I did, right? And so, um, you know, and Sivo has a, a a command right here. So, like, basically, they have a CLI for you to do this. So you can go ahead and go Sivo, and you know, create your cluster. Once you've signed up for an account with them, you get, you 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 tie into an API, and then you can deploy. So you can see here if I go K okay, get pods. This is deployed right now. These three pods are running, 
And if we look here, I can also just run, you know, and try to get into the pod and just run some, uh, some just show tables, just something like this. So you can see again, I have it running, it's running just fine. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. My attack vectors are a couple. I'm gonna try to delete a pod and, and but I'm gonna run a, um, I'm gonna run a script that's going to, basically there's a load generating script that they, they run that shows you like, I'm gonna run it and you can still see it being resilient after I've done that. So let's go ahead and it's meaning the data is still there. So let's go ahead and do that. So Dan, real quickly, uh, yeah. So yep. as part of CockroachDB, we have something called Cockroach Demo. If you want a lot more information, go check out our docs. Again, I, I love our docs team. The stuff they do is just phenomenal. Thank you for calling that out too, Dan, because I yep. think they, they do some really good work. And I mean, in terms of like open source and all that, like doc is huge. Um, but Cockroach Demo is really cool because what it does is it it, it simulates, I, I can actually run a nine node cluster on this laptop and simulate a workload against it, or you can have a real cluster and simulate a workload. We have a couple of different workloads. Mover is one of them, which is like a ride sharing app distributed uh i think we have the tpcc benchmark what else I, what else do we have chris i think ycsb what else I mean, we have kv which is the one that uh, Dan, uh pop's going to show here and you know i would separate two so cockroach demo is kind of like setting up you know a sivo environment for you right? oh yeah, so yeah, create, yeah, yeah create that infrastructure for you and then yeah. you can use use cockroach workload to, to send the workload to that cluster that's right. great so we give you all the tools if you want to simulate an environment on your local laptop and then pass at the workload like like uh, pops go show us here so i'm going to run as well is they have a really cool dashboard and i'll show you that real quick um which shows you kind of what's going on in the cluster and again i love this because look it shows the three nodes if we were to deplete it, it it'll show um what's going on here and so all right, so this is happening. I'm going to do this for workload here, and this is just going to run this script that's continually running against the cluster, you know, acro across the the three nodes that are part of the said cluster. And we'll see here um, you know, sessions or whatever, right? So the mm -hmm. obvious one, right, is I'm just going to try to delete a pod here. So K get pods, which again, kubectl, this is an alias. So I'll go K delete pod. Let's just do cockroach two. Okay, now notice on the left side, everyone, okay? Still running, right? Still running against the cluster. Nothing's going on there. We go here, look, there's a dead node. Okay. Foiled again. Again, this is like a two year thing. I was at the Edge conference <laughs> trying to literally on stage, trying to, to, to murder this, this database and, and just, just wouldn't do anything. He just wouldn't do it. By the way, Dan, the first time I saw this was Polvi on stage with with Spencer back at OpenStack Summit in like 2017, and they had like 10 people on stage, and each of them were killing pods at the same. And like literally, the the workload was still running. I was like, that was the first time I ever saw like a distributed database on a distributed like on Kubernetes, and I was like, oh my god, that's cool. Now look at that though. Look, we killed the pod. It restarted itself again. Building on the resiliency of Kubernetes, and this is a plug not for Cockroach, but for Kubernetes yeah. that, that Cockroach employs here. Look, basically there was a health check that said it's gone, it's gone. I'm gonna go, you know, once we delete it, it started restarting and stuff. That's the resiliency that Cockroach is using. But not only that, the resiliency of the database. Look, left side, that generator is still running, even after I've <laughs> I've deleted that. So again, foiled again, check mark for you all. All right. Let's do something else here. I'm gonna try to go into one of these pods. All right, which let's go ahead and take a look. And, and by the way, is there any questions from, let me stop sharing real quick if there's any questions. So I'm not able to see the questions other than. No, I think we're good right now. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna try to exec into one of these pods. And by the way, during this demo after, or excuse me, during this thing, I really wanna also install something called Falco. If you all are familiar, it's a runtime a project for, for, it's a CNCF project that will also track everything that I'm doing from a runtime perspective in these environments. So if I was to rename something or, you know, do a configuration change or all of those things where I wanna kind of have a, a forensics of what occurred, that's where you would use it. So not only having built on what Cockroach built into securing these pods because they're in a ton of enterprises and they've done this and you know for for a long time, they have this capability on top of it. Okay, um, excuse me, with with Falco if they were to do it. So let me go ahead and go Cockroach one, and I'm going to just do a bash here. 
So I'm in here, and if I do a PWD, you notice that it already brings me into the, it, and I knitted that pod to cockroach, and there's a command there called cockroach. And there's a script if we do cockroach here. And fellas, keep me honest here. Uh, oops, I'm gonna think I'm gonna have to cat it because you all have smartly, smartly have not allowed you to use more or any of the other tools. All right, so we see that this is basically executing cockroach, cockroach, and running that uh, in the in the uh, in the shell. Once uh, I, I'm assuming that's some type of init process that you all have did as part of the um, uh, the initiation here. I don't know if you guys want to give it some more background on that. Go ahead, Jim. Do you have anything? I'm not sure what the the cockroach that sh is. I don't, I don't think it's a necessary thing that that you have. It has to be there. I, I think it's just when it's starting up the container. This is just how it's executing the the you know the binary. It's, it's it that simple. And 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 so again, if nobody was monitoring this or looking at this, somebody could probably do something like this, right? Go ahead and move cockroach to hacked. Okay. And what happens then, right? Is look, and again, shows its resiliency. I just tried to change the if I was to like restart the proc. If I go ahead and go into procs right here, and we'll see. Oops. Because it's the init proc, I'm gonna go into one. And if we go more we're command line here, uh, I'm sorry, I did that again. Because again, smartly. The engineers at Cockroach have not allowed me to use more, so I'll use this, right? Because that's a, a an attack vector. This is showing you exactly what like the the init um, the process for launching the container is doing. Okay, it's trying to it's using that you know, HTTP address, trying to join zero, one, and two. I'm assuming that's some type of like launch um, or, or um, cluster script or whatever. It's also probably set to some settings that you need for max SQL memory and all of that fun stuff, right? So if I was to, I don't know, you know, edit that or something like that, I would assume that I'd be able to bring this down. However, since it's in memory and it's probably running, there's like, unless I have to deleted the pod and I did that, there's really nothing I, you know, that's something that probably is not a good attack vector there. So let's go ahead and see, is our database still running? Is our cluster still running? Well, yes, it certainly is. I foiled again. Look at our left side of the screen. What's going on here? The load is still running. I'm keeping that up and running the whole time. So you can see it's literally that key gen is not just running. It's running in the pod, but it's running against the cluster. So, you know, if two of those pods went down, it's still running. I have, and I was telling the folks before we, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Um, I was telling the folks before we, uh, uh, got on the air about, I used to work for an investment software company and it was an in-memory database. And we built things that actually were like, basically it's, it was a segmented, uh, we called it advent global area. It was called the segment Ag advent global area. And this thing was basically a, a chunk that was sharded through multiple hosts of data. And we'd have to join it through some type of service layer. You all have obfuscated all of that into the process. It's yeah. fantastic. It's like that, like that to me is genius. See, I'm not just yeah, a pretty just, face, Jim. I'm not a pretty face. I'm done. You're not you are the greatest. Stuff. Yeah. Come on, Chris. So when, you were when you were showing that, that command pop, so there's a, a um, there's a, a flag there that just says, you know, I want to join these other nodes to, um, to the cluster, and that just does that initially as the initialization. That and you can't go and you can't go and change that. Uh, you know, once it's once it's already initialized. Yep. And, and that's the beauty of it. Again. Um, and then I want to show one more attack vector here. And then I want to show some protection steps that we can do. So here, um, I'm going to go back into one again. You want to share again, Dan? Oh, I didn't. I, sh I, I should be sharing. sharing oh, yeah, point. I think. Yeah, I think. Uh, there we go. Okay. You were, you were, you were. Okay. So um, if we look here, let me hide this. And I'm sorry, there's a lot of stuff on the screen. And this is as large as I can get the, the environment. But if, what if I was to schmod? And we can see again, it's hacked and it's still running, right? But what if I, let me go ahead and move it back. Move hacked, uh, cockroach. What if I was to do something like this? What if I was to do a schmod? If I was to change permissions, that's a, a, a kill. It's usually a something, I, you know, some type of some admin would do or, or, or some type of uh, 
evil person would do. So let me go ahead and shot smod zero zero cockroach. Give it no, which means um, give it no, um, yeah. yeah, give it no like access or none than all from read or anything like that, right? Look at our left side of the screen, y'all. What's going on? Tell me what's going on, everyone. Who who's going to give me the play by play? Still, I mean, still, running. Running. still up, still up. No. Okay, look, I, 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 that's three attack vectors, three in a matter of, of four minutes that we've done, right? Now, look, everyone can say to me, hey, Pop, what if I went in and did something like this? Let me make this a little larger. Oops. What if I went in and did something like, um, see the stateful set that gets created? What if I change the, um, uh, where is it? You know, the mount path. First off, like Jim talked about in the beginning, that's something that, look, you can you can putz with any of this stuff and get growing. But if, if this was happening from a production perspective where somebody did muck with a, with a setting, that's where you'd probably have even additional protection with something called Falco, which right. let me show you that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and deploy that in the environment, OK? Now, I created a custom rule. I want to show you all this custom rule. Rem so the way that Falco works, you all, is again, if you go to falco.org, it's a CNCF project, incubated project created by Sysdig. What it is, is it taps into the kernel and you can have a rule set that you can basically say, if something is violated, go ahead and send an output to standard out or something called sidekick, which we have, which allows you to send it to things like Prometheus or Slack or PagerDuty or any of those types of things. Okay, this is the rule syntax here. I have a rule that's get created, it's called cockroach tampering detector. And what directory were, were we in? Jim2, you're on the spot here. Which directory is all of our, our goodies in? Give me a hint. Uh, yes, the slash cockroach directory. Exactly. So if we look at this from an event arg perspective, what are the three things I did? I moved, I schmodded, I, you know, um, I terminaled into that container to, to muck with it, right? OK. So this is basically going to look at every single physical change that's happened in that directory for me to have that peace of mind. Okay, so I'm in this directory. And again, there's my custom rule that I got created. So I'm going to go Helm, install Falco and do my thing. All right, so I'm going to go uh, K get pods dash N Falco. Hmm. This is the, this is one <clears throat> command that ran is installed the Falco daemon, the uh, Falco processes sidekick and this UI. So here's what I'm going to do again. We're going to go through that same scenario we did to another pod, right? So let me go ahead and let me just see what, once this is running. Uh, give me a sec because these three are running right now. Let me do the port forward. And I'm going to do something like this. Are you all still seeing my screen? Yeah. Yes, we are. OK. I'm going to do Whoa. something like this. This is a UI very similar to what you all is kind of showing if rules are violated here, OK? So let's go ahead and do one here. Let me just kick it pods again. And we're running. So I'm going to exec into a pod again. And it's going to be cockroach one. Let me move this. Oh, mash. I'm in that pod now. Let's look here. Oh, what happened? What does this tell you? Let me make this a little larger. Come on. This is telling me that, look at that. Um, a, a shell was spawned in the container with the attached kernel. This is showing me that somebody went into it, like I did, right? Let me try to move a file that's in there. So in our cockroach directory, we're going to move cockroach again to hacked gym two, right? Okay. And we're going to go back here and we'll notice that, look, there's our UI. These things happen. We're going to go here and we see that, look at that. It moved. There's the name of the file. Hold on, cockroach here. You give it one sec. Let me just refresh it. And we could see that somebody tampered in there and there's a cockroach tampering detector there, right? So it told me that somebody, that, that rule that I created that I showed you before, it told me, told me exactly what happened. And also look at that. Wait a second. It's telling me 
in this directory exactly when when somebody uh, uh, edited or went into there. So, so Pop, how do you set up the rules then? I mean, is that just something that like comes out of the box? You got to kind of customize that. Do you just think through that? Like, that is out of the box. Yeah. Um, those are out of the box rules. Hold on one sec. Um, yeah, those are out of the box rules. But also, you see here, I was able to customize a rule and create one called rules right. roach, for instance. So now, if I wanted to, I could merge this, and then somebody, this is the beauty of open source, could use this in their environment to protect themselves right? Protect themselves, their cockroach environment from the same exact things that I just did. I just tried to attack. I tried to move that, that director. I tried to move that file. I tried to, um, you know, schmod that file, yeah. all of those things. Mm -hmm. So not only does it have the protection that you all have built in by, again, your vulnerability, like I looked at the vulnerability of, of the dependencies that are part of your environment, they're immaculate. They're already, there's no vulnerabilities there. That's number one. Um, secondly, from a runtime perspective, right? Those things that I showed you, if something was running in production and you want to say, hey, Jim went in there, like you saw how I went into Jim hacked and it immediately showed me on that UI exactly when Jim went into that pod, right? So not only was I trying to hack you all, I was trying to give you all advice at home for how you can address these things. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, it's funny. I'm sorry, I was eating popcorn along the way, by the way, Pop, just so you know, that's if anybody saw it. Uh, you know, it's funny. We we've we've had it. We had a webinar a couple weeks back, and it, we actually employed Cubenoom on top of uh, a cluster. And uh, my buddy Keith uh, was going through and shooting pods, uh, and you know the pods are coming down and they're coming back. It was much more violent than this, I gotta say. You know, um, but actually, he did kill a cluster at one point because we were actually running a database across multiple different cloud providers. Like we had one single logical database. I think we were on Amazon, Aurora and GCP. I, I forget what that was. I don't know if Chris or Jim, but I think it was like, I forget what it was, but, um, but he had killed like the, he had killed the networking process. And so again, like, how do you think through the redundancies of what that would look like? How but do you that's the whole that point though. Gym. Exactly. Like that, right? It's the whole like, point. Like anybody could really take down anything, but it's exactly. these physical things. You want to be able to see what went on right. to be able to like it, understand that. Yeah. And then when it does happen to have the accountability, right? I always think about the AAA of security, you know, authentication, authorization, accountability, like yep. understanding what happened to, to, to do the forensics or to actually understand like, and, and to put some new rule in place or whatever that is. I think that's, what's really nice here. Dan, so. But also with your product, I'm going to throw this at you as well. I love this. Uh, where is it? This. Here's a network diagnostics exactly for the scenario that well, you're yeah, in here. Can you throw that again, Dan? I'm sorry. The, the bigger, yeah, the, the network diagnostics is really cool. I love this thing, by the way. So <laughs> this basically, if you, like you said, the scenarios I mentioned earlier, if you're multi-cloud, right? This yeah. is amazing. I could look at this and sort this by the cluster, for instance, if I have multiple clusters that are happening within the environments. And look, I don't want to sell this. This is all you, your, well, your I, deal here, but I mean, you know, you know, the, you know, the gist of it, but. Well, what I love, what I love about that is it just shows like, so I, I talk a lot with people about distributed systems and distributed thinking and building a distributed mindset, right? Pop. And I think, I think that distributed mindset is one of those things like that was my big, like leap to understand Kubernetes. Like, look, there's the logical understanding of what we do in our code and kind of all these different things. It's the physical aspect of these things where I think is the, the complexities that that I think we all kind of struggle with sometimes when we when we move into distributed systems, right? And I think it's kind of like one of those things like the, the distributed nature of a system and understanding the network latencies because ultimately we're up against the speed of light, right? Uh, what are we doing, right? And so that that's why we added that screen. Actually, that was something that our internal team used to troubleshoot things because we didn't understand, like literally like the latencies between pods or latencies between nodes was getting all out of whack. And man, is it and and surfacing that has really become really really a critical piece of troubleshooting tool for us. Um, and by the way, it was green, and then like the longer the latency, it was red in that UI. They changed it a because I'm sorry, I'm colorblind. I was like, I can't tell the difference. No, no, that is I, basically sometimes there is longer latencies, and that's okay too. Let's tell you what that that hop between. New York and Singapore is that's that's long and you can't get past that stuff. So but, but going back to the scenario, Jim, you mentioned earlier, it was like, hey, you know, any anybody could look, I could literally disable networking the CNI pretty simply. It's pretty, you know, I could do some type of like mesh that doesn't allow like, you know, one pod to talk to the other or ingress rule or anything like that. Right. So 
Um, but in terms of, like I said, those physical things that folks would do um, to be able to hack not only your database, but the underlying pods that your data, you know, the database, your cluster is running on. That to me is, is, is something that like, you know, uh, sys calls are something that can help address those things. I mean, there's yeah. other things like um, you, 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 there's PSPs. So if you're all familiar with like OPA or like, you know, Caverno or those types of things you can put in place. But I just want to tell you all again, if out of the box, I have never seen a, 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 a project or excuse me, a, a product that are, has built in all of these things, because mm -hmm. I'm assuming that you all have had to protect, you know, against a lot of the enterprise customers asking for, hey, it needs to be this, this and this. It's it, it is really good. And again, I don't put my name to anything that I don't believe I believe in. And I think Cockroach is, is phenomenal. So wow. you beat me. You beat me today. You beat me today. But I'm still going to come at you. I'm going to figure out some ways to get you all. I, that's that's a little aggressive, but it's cool. I'm I'm cool. I'm good with you, Pop. I mean, you know, you are the greatest. It's a bit bold coming in here with a goat shirt and whatnot, too. So, yeah, uh, yeah you know, one of the other attack vectors, I think some people, well, it's not an attack vector. It's just like, yeah, thinking through resilience in your own applications and how do you build these things into it, I think is the next generation of, of applications that we're seeing. I, I, I think that's what's really cool today. Like, it's natural to it. Somebody, you know, when I first started here, I was talking to the internal team. I'm like, we need an operator, blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, Kubernetes, the operator is the important thing. I was like, and I remember our internal team saying, like, we don't need an operator. We, we just, we function like Kubernetes. I'm like, yeah, you're right. But like, there's day two stuff. And like, and I think that's where it gets, you know, and it's it's working these things into the concepts itself. Like, like our UI, like that UI, you could hit anyone in the nose to get that, right? Like, and so how do you set that up in production to actually, you know, move against that. I, you know, Jim too, you and I were talking about this before. It's like, yeah, put a load balancer in front of that with one single IP address so that you can actually hit it. And it's going to hit any one of the nodes to service up the UI. Great. You know what I mean? Like, and it's, it's really kind of topology and configuration, how you think about these things, I think ultimately. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting. You know, it's part, part of my job. Uh, I, I work with clients that are, that are going to run Cockroach DB. And a lot of times they'll say, Hey, we want to go through and do some failure testing. What happens if, region goes down what happens if node goes down and um so it, when I, if you're working with a client you say are, are you deployed on you know bare metal or are you deployed on kubernetes and i'll say well we're deployed on kubernetes and you say well it's actually kind of hard to do failure testing when you're deployed <laughs> on kubernetes because you, you know you, it, it, you know cockroach provides like redundancy at the data level and kubernetes provides redundancy at the at the um the uh, infrastructure level so like you, you can go kill a pod like like Pop did here a minute ago, and Kubernetes just brings it back up, you know. Uh, right. So like when when we go to do like like serious failure testing in Kubernetes, we have to get real creative and say, okay, here here's how to kind of you know uh, you know pr pretend like this whole region went down. It, it's actually pretty pretty hard to do. Yeah. Or I mean, and is a cluster a failure domain? You know, I mean, is is a Kubernetes cluster a failure domain now? And actually, you know, the, the demo that we did with Keith, that's what we were treating it as. Like we were actually a single logical database across three Kubernetes couplers, completely non-connected, no federation, no control, like literally three separate. And yeah, we were still doing the same things that, that I think Pop just showed you. So uh, I don't know, Chris, do you want to take this question that came up? Yeah, so this one's pretty straightforward. So there is, um, there is uh, encryption at rest that you can enable within the cluster. So if you want to, you know, say, hey, for the cluster I'm going to have, I want particular stores within the cluster to be encrypted. Um, you can turn that on, and then if you want, you can even pin tables to those stores to just say, hey, this is my user credential table. Make sure it's pinned to those stores so that that data is always encrypted. Yeah. Um, and then there's key rotation. That's part of that. Uh, it's very well documented to say, hey, you know, here's the encryption key I want to use. Here's why, why my new key that I want to rotate to. And um, you could do that all as an online process. Yeah, so protection of that as well. Damn, where'd, uh, Pop, where'd you get that cool GIF I just saw all of a sudden, dude? I, I never get any of the cool toys from my team. And you got like, yeah, what's up, dude? We, we yeah, created hey. that for you. Uh, you all hear me OK? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah so we, cre we we created that for you uh, as part of the podcast. So uh, oh, wow. yeah, it was know? yeah because you know we were looking at we first off we love the logo and stuff like that. So I was like I, I have one of our our creative director actually worked for Weta in New Zealand. So he's he's you know who did all those special effects for like Lord of the Rings and all that fun stuff. So he's like I really like their logo. Can I do something with it? And so he did. <laughs> y'all y'all approved cool. it. So yeah. 
So, so Dan, last question for you, and I'm sorry, Pop. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know how to call you, Dan. Um, you call me whatever, man. It's all good. What? Um, just call, don't call you late for dinner. Oh, boom, boom. The, um, the name, and, and so y'all like look at the name came from kind of this resilient nature of it, and and Spencer, our founder, has has a bit of dark humor. He actually named. If you're not familiar with GIMP, which is open source, you know, photo manipulation tool, Spencer and Peter, our two founders, actually started that, which is pretty cool, right? Um, and they named it the GIMP, which is, if you know Pulp Fiction, it's just an odd name for a project. And they also named Cockroach because Spencer's, you know, hanging out in New York, started to build this, named, needed to name the Git repo and named it Cockroach. I don't know. I guess he saw one there. I, I don't know. Dan, we get this question all the time. You know, would you not buy this thing because of the name? If it does the thing it does, which he just showed you, and again, I go back to I go back to years of like you know being this in memory database that I had to deal with all the repercussions. I was I was literally implementations, and also I was like a tech troubleshooter, and having yeah. to like re reconcile all this data. If I had this back in the day, I don't care what it was named. It could be named crap on a cracker. I don't care if it did the job, which it yeah. does. Crap on and, a cracker DB. Yeah. I, hashtag. Yeah. I'm gonna go get the Twitter thing. Uh, you know, crap on a Tra cracker. trademark that, Chris. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're you're first on that. Look, you can take that and run with it. There you go. Yeah. So so people love it or hate it, and thank you, Anchor, for for loving the name. Love it or hate it, people don't forget it. That's for sure. I, you know, and I've now just guaranteed y'all, like, you know, Pop, you're not the 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 person on Hacker News that every time we float out there, like, we'll have this like awesome post, and like somebody will be like, yeah. It's really cool, but that name sucks. And I'm like, oh, okay, like, all right, you know, people still buy it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, people love it, so it's it's cool. So, uh, thank you, Pop, for doing that. That was awesome. Uh, I'm finally, I'm happy that you and I finally got on together uh, again. I, you know, I, I was honored to be on the podcast uh, as well. Thank you for having me there, and and thanks for being a friend, dude. I, I like I said before, I've been in the CNCF for a while, and I've met some really great people. You're Definitely at the in in that in that list of people that I kind of cherish these relationships with. So and and look, yeah, you know, you kind of know what you're doing. I'm all right. I'm bit. all right. I, I you know, it pays the bills. But I, I honestly back right back at you. Cockroach has been a big supporter of not only of the podcast, but also just of uh, you know, in general of of cloud native efforts and and just everybody I've met from from Cockroach has been phenomenal. Like I had some questions about this load generator, and like Jim Two was on it, Chris was on it, like immediately. So. I mean, again, you know, I, I say this all the time, but like, you don't buy a project product, you don't buy Cockroach the product, you buy Cockroach the company, and they're just phenomenal people. So like, go out there and just you know, kick the tires again, Cockroach Labs slash podcast. You can do, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's some cool stuff in terms of, you know, kicking the tires, doing exactly what I did here. Look, it's it was literally within five minutes I had that up and running. They also have a cloud uh, deployment as well. And look, I'm not shilling product there. I'm just telling you, I really how easy it was to get deployed. So you are just like the master promoter and the king of all plugs. I got to tell you, I love it. I love it, buddy. Chris, follow, hey, follow podcast you. pop on Twitter. Sorry. Okay. Go. Yeah. Pop has that time. On, yeah, exactly. Uh, you are, you are the, you, you had to throw that in there just cause I, I had to. Uh, Chris, Jim, thank you guys. Uh, yeah, thank you. Dan, this is awesome. Seeing, seeing Falco run was, was great. I could just imagine how, a lot of our financial services customers would love to have that tooling around the, you know, around their Kubernetes environment. I mean, they love Cockroach for the resilience, but I think they love Falco even more for all the auditing capabilities that they can have within their environment. So it's great to see that today. Awesome. Yeah, and Jim, thanks very much. Uh, yeah, you know, I did, we didn't really have to get too deep into the Kubernetes stuff with uh, this one. I think, it, like you said, I think it's it's tough to kill us, right? Yeah, it, 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 it's a good combo. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the first time I saw it was the reason I ended up actually working at uh, Cockroach Labs because the the combination of those two things. So, yeah, look at y'all like uh, Dan. It, it, thanks again for joining. Um, you know, on behalf of everybody at Cockroach Labs, you know, we really appreciate everything you do, and and you know, you talk very kindly about us. So seriously, we really appreciate it, and it really does come back to people. And so, say hi to my friend John. Uh, if anybody wants to talk to a great salesperson, John Ferris on the West Coast, good buddy of mine. The Sysdig team is good up and down. So uh, I, I love John. So anyway, uh, but yeah, if anybody else wants to try and crash and do these things, we're, we're happy to talk through them and have these conversations, maybe on Twitter, maybe elsewhere. So reach out to us. Uh, we, we're, we're accessible in lots of different ways. So 
Um, thank you, everybody, but, but thank you most, uh, the three of you. All right. Thank you. All, all right, everybody wave and say goodbye. Happy trails. Cheers. See you all. Thank you.